It's time to start the video. You get it? It's funny because it's a video about time. Time and time again, video games use time as a core gameplay structure, sometimes for puzzles and other times for, ooh, cool graphics. Time is a mechanic, a way of lighting, and a cool gimmick, and any and all uses of it can be effective in immersing the player into a game world. So many times, games forget to fully implement time. All right, that's it. Video game time is a modality for fun creation, and the use of it across a wide spectrum of games can mean only one thing. I should probably make a video about it. So let's have a look at the three types of time in video games. On the smallest scale use of time, we see day and night cycles, which use time as a means of altering the lighting, often immersing the player deeper into the video game world. Every open world game has a day-night cycle, but the ones that thrive the most off of it are the ones that use the light change to affect gameplay. Minecraft's hordes come out to fight in the darkness, meaning that you need to prepare during the day so a zombie doesn't creep up on you at night. Similarly, fighting is drastically altered in games like Rust at night, as enemies give away their position with the use of a torch or the flash of a muzzle. But sometimes this cycle is just used to make things pretty. Sable's rolling skybox is one of my favorite day-night cycles, putting its cel-shaded art style on full display. Some games represent time by using the seasonal changes of a year year time, and there are three different ways of doing that. There is the leveling method advantaged by Forza Horizons 4, wherein winning races will progress you to the next season, as the seasons alter race types and terrain effects. The game allows you to change seasons at your own pace so that you can fully take in fall and then rush through summer as quickly as possible. The next modality for seasonal shifts is in game time. Since when do you say modality? Since today. I like it. Stardew Valley has its own calendar with 28 days in every season. It's like it's always February. Yay. The seasons of Stardew dictate your crop, meaning that you have to plan things out in order to advantage the months properly. The final form of year time is our actual year time. Animal Crossing being the main culprit, as whatever time it is in the real world is the same time in Animal Crossing. Need a night fish? Then fish at real world night time. Want to see the snow? Then wait till it's cold outside in the real world. There is a unique novelty that makes me love this mechanic, and it's something I always look forward to when booting up the game. But one of the best ways to manipulate time in a video game is by allowing the player to become God. And manipulate it themselves. In Super Hot, you get the opportunity to move time at your own pace as you freeze bullets and cut through enemies like a little ninja, starting and stopping the motion of the world with your own motion. It creates a badass feeling of control. Other games allow you to freeze time on specific objects as Link puts stasis on a boulder and Cal slows down a charging enemy. But one of the oldest examples of time manipulation is in Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, where Link can slow time or skip entire days with the use of music. And if you want to see a game used time manipulation really poorly, Deathloop. Time is an incredibly dense mechanic within video games, and honestly, I feel like I barely began to scratch the surface of the immense role that time can play within our video games. And each of these subcategories will probably get their own video in the near future, as I have so much I want to elaborate on further. And also, I'm running out of ideas. Well, that's it. It's time uh, for, for me to go. Th thanks for watching.